Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We've got a special guest with us today. We finally collected all the base gang infinity stones, Mr. Tommy P. What's up? Thanks so much for, for having me here. This Definitely, is man. So for those that don't know Tommy, he is... Um, so you reside in the Czech Republic, is that right? Yeah. That's he correct. he is a bass baritone singer esque, is that right? Bass baritone somewhere in there, bass. Yeah. It's I've never got officially classified by any anyone <laughs> <laughs> like in the industry, but yeah, you know, probably. So he's probably. so he's been singing for several years. He's a he's a, a rising name in the acapella industry of being with his involvement in the bass gang as well as his uh individual work excited to have him today we're going to learn more about him and if you don't know much about him today is your lucky day so with that said we're going to jump right into it um we're going to start off really light what is your <laughs> favorite or preferred drink drink <laughs> mm -hmm. beer that's for sure <laughs> ever john fair enough right mm. what beer out of curiosity well, this is uh, <clears throat> this is called Kozel, which is uh, one of the classic uh, Czech beers, and this one is I think four point six percent. And yeah, it's one of the good ones in my opinion. But the opinions differ in Czech Republic. We are very sensitive about our beer. <laughs> oh yeah, I know that a lot of people over your direction across the pond are usually very, like very adamant or like very passionate about your beers and such yep yeah yes. that was a long history of it <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see all right jumping right into the uh music questions here what okay. or who got you into music oh that is a very specific question for a very broad answer <laughs> yes it is. a lot of people and a lot of coincidences happening at the same time but uh, I asking like on, for one specific person who like pushed me towards like the career that I have or something like that or ge in general into music as it is. Both, either way, yeah. Okay. Well, for music, it was probably my mom because she was she was always the uh, talented musician in the family, mm. and so we were singing a lot when I was when I was a kid, just like around uh, bonfire, you know, uh, with a guitar. And with the rest of our family my dad was like into the little bit harder stuff but he he wasn't like musically oriented at all so it was probably my mom who started uh, started me on that path i got <laughs> you for for the career well first uh my best friend back then uh andrew he showed me a video of, of pentatonics which basically showed me the whole acapella world Yes. Um, that's un unforgettable. <laughs> and, Agreed. Yeah, Peter Hollands was probably the one who uh, made me realize that you can actually do it, like, um, with just by yourself. You don't need anything else, anyone else. Just start creating, and if it's going to be worth something, people are going to notice in time. <laughs> I guarantee you, like, I, that, I had the exact same experience getting myself into, into primarily singing pentatonics, Pentatonics is like they're a gateway drug for lack of better terms. Like yeah. you get you get you get hooked whenever you hear pentatonics and then after that you just dive into this deep rabbit hole. It's, yeah, and it's very deep. <laughs> it's very very deep. <laughs> yeah, I've been in that rabbit, rabbit hole my whole life. Jeez. <laughs> so well, yeah. pentatonics <laughs> and Peter Hollins. I I was in the same boat. Peter Hollins was mm. some of my he was the other one that got me into it. Yeah, he's an excellent singer, and I was just astonished by the vocal, vocal quality and skill he has. He and is truly amazing. a wonder. Let's he sure see. is. What are, who are some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career? Influential figures? Huh. Well, in my personal life, it's probably going to be my dad for the can the skill of dealing with situations that need to be dealt with uh, getting stuff I, done 
yeah it's, it's just like yeah to, to get stuff done i get that all, all of that from my dad <clears throat> and then music hmm most influential figure i guess avi kaplan like <clears throat> from the like uh, idol stand of uh, point of Oh yeah, what, yeah. What <laughs> Point of view. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm struggling with the words. Oh, he's a. He was one of the ones that got me into bass singing. Mm -hmm. I think he was yeah. the first where I experienced true bass singing. Oh yeah. Dude, what was the first video you ever saw of Avi? Like, not like a song, but when you re realize, like, who, oh, oh, this guy is like. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I saw that really caught my attention with him in particular, I think was their Daft Punk remix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I think that's one of the one of the pinnacle songs of a cappella yeah. music that really got people's attention when it comes to bass in particular. Mm -hmm. Because you just get you get multiple B ones and at the at the time at least that wasn't that common oh yeah like in <clears throat> pop music at all and they were aiming pretty hardcore to the pop audience yes they were and they nailed it absolutely oh, yeah. nailed it <laughs> yeah they took the spot very fast <laughs> it was it was crazy to think too that how quickly they became the among the biggest names in the acapella industry oh yeah i i, ju I just remember them already being kind well kind of it was I don't even remember how much like subscribers they had, but it was there uh, with the, uh, what is it called? The uh, Candle Lust. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, I didn't even know Avi was doing a bass because I was l listening to it on my not really bassy speaker <laughs> when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And then he was just then doing like, I'm like, what, what is he doing? Like, is, that, <laughs> is it like a second beatboxer or something? Because I've never seen anybody doing vocal bass like this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I then I saw the vocal range video by back then Alberto Maraceschi. That was the that was the go to vocal range guy. And he did the like a, a vocal range video of Pentatonics uh, volume two. The album that they did with like Hit the Road, Jack Hey Mama remix, and yes, uh, Love yes. Again, and there was also Daft Punk, and I, I heard some of those notes like for uh, even in the Love Again, did you have love like that? Yeah, hey, that... one there. I was just like, oh, wow, uh, this is this is what he does. And this... I finally realized <laughs> what he was doing. I'm like, this is my life right now. This this guy is a bass. I I love the sound of this. I want more. Yeah. I want more. Exactly. Man, he was right. he's a huge contributor to my involvement in acapella music. Oh yeah. What is something that one of those influential figures, so being like your parents or anyone else that influenced you in a, in a big way, what is something mm -hmm. that one of those figures has said to you that stuck with you your entire music journey or life journey? Oh, that is a good question. There is one point that I remember, and it was when I was a fan of Peter Hollands, and before I even started doing any kind of music on YouTube, I was just like maybe maybe experimenting with like recording myself in private, but uh, I was a big fan of his, and I joined like a, a Facebook group that he was part of, and mm -hmm. it was called uh, the Holland's Family. And yeah, it was the official group for Holland's Family. Mm -hmm. That that is his kind of fan base. Yeah, and I remember there was a moderator of the group. I think the name was Robin Pierce. But I'm not hundred percent sure now. And they told me like uh, super in something that just just got stuck in my head for the rest of my musical career. But I I sent them the my, like one of my recordings and they were like, yeah, like it's pretty good. I was like, nah, it's not like it it is it is terrible. And I shouldn't <laughs> even have sent it to you. I'm like and I. I remember saying the sentence like, oh, I'm never going to have the vocal range of, of Peter. And she, um, they said that, oh, that is not true. And like, you don't have to have all the spectrum, like in the exact way he does. You can have your own thing. 
like if you really like what you do and if it's really something that's gonna fulfill you i guess then like this is some minor inconvenience and you just have to go for it and use what you can do and so i tried it with like the lower stuff and the kind of base stuff and started to work so i was like yeah okay it and started I sticking I like people that. started liking it yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I think without that message i would probably never got the courage to start doing any music like publicly so i think yeah that's the that's Do the point you, sounds like you may have had some imposter syndrome back then well back then i was so bad trust me like <laughs> <laughs> I, if, if somebody like that is it comes to the industry like right at this moment and i saw that work i would be like nah like to, to leave it <laughs> it's, not, it's not good leave it to the professionals right <laughs> yeah but sometimes you just yeah have to not care what everybody thinks just if you trust yourself just tr just try and you'll see i'm i'm in the same boat as you were back then man like i i i hit the stride with the youtube channel mm -hmm. and i'm like okay the youtube channel ta is taken off people will hear my voice and they and they hear me singing these videos and they're like you should sing and i'm like are you kidding me i sound like absolute crap <laughs> yeah. or at least that's what i thought and i can attribute most of my musical confidence and my musical ability now to the bsn believe it or not oh really <laughs> believe it or not whoa so okay. and, the, and the reason being well i've been singing for years right but i never yeah. really had my confidence i guess you could say never really had the yeah. confidence in myself i didn't i didn't train as much so I mean, the fact that I'm training more, I can also loosely attribute to the, the Bass Nation. Like, I learned a lot from them, but primarily the one of the biggest things that I can attribute to your following and the Bass Gang's following is coming into contact with people that really push me to put out content regardless of what I think of it. And I had, okay. I had really, really, I have really poor, I have really strong uh, imposter syndrome to where I just think... Uh, I don't know why I'm even recording. I just need to leave this to the pe the people that do it best. I'm like, people basically told me that's hogwash. You need to you need to put out your own music. And and some mm -hmm. of the other people in my in my in, in person life have told me like, just send it. What what have you have to lose? Exactly, just do it. <laughs> just do it. That's the, what do you have to lose? So I started yes. doing it, and I eventually found someone to do my first cover with. And I was just, I was, I was overwhelmed with just excitement with how it turned out. And then oh, that right there, nice. that right there is what really got me into like doing my own music. That feeling that you get after like a really good project. Yeah. Like you get someone that can mix and master that actually yeah. knows what they're doing and you, you do what they tell you. They, and then they help you out with that. And then the finished product, you listen to it and you're like, oh my God, I did yeah. not know I could yeah. sound like that. <laughs> oh yeah dude i know that feeling so well <laughs> it, it is crazy that's that's how yeah. i got into music and i'm it's just ever, ever since i jumped into that is so awesome dude i'm so glad that i actually like because i pushed you a little bit because like that was the um uh, original purpose i guess when we decided to make bsn like a public kind of thing mm -hmm. like for everyone or surrounding base not uh not just like the fans of my channel which was the original idea yeah. But then, yeah, it was like a hub for everybody who needed to learn anything or be pushed a little bit, have a community around this thing. But yeah, it unfortunately turned out into a very <laughs> <laughs> huge spiral of uh, just a I don't know how to even huge describe. music rabbit. It's hole. not a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I will say that, though, about this first cover that I did, I'm not sure if you had a chance to listen to it yet. Um, I did a cover of, it's not Naturals, um, Believer from Imagine Dragons with Fernie. Oh, Believer. That yes. is a, why did you pick something so hard? <laughs> There's so many easier songs. This new Amazing Grace. Everybody loves that. You're good at song. Okay. I <laughs> know. Well, you, would, you wouldn't believe it, how actually seemingly easy it was. He uh, er, okay, send it my way. That's gonna be interesting. He um he, Fernie arranged it. He did some of the lower bass stuff, and mm -hmm. 
I did my parts. I did like seven or six or seven parts, like high highs, mids. I did my lead. Yeah. And then he worked his magic and pushed it out. It's a short cover, about half the song. And it turned out really good, man. I like I was just so happy. Okay. That's that yeah, right there. We'll definitely send it to him. I'm gonna check it out for it. Definitely. We'll do. But that right there yeah. is my first official like first. That was my first oh. musical oh. project that I've ever been involved in. Oh, and you like it. <laughs> and, and I like it, which is yeah. not, which is, most people don't like their first. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. Well, like, don't tell me this is what, this was your first recording, like, ever. You probably experimented with some stuff. Right? I've experimented before, but this is, this was my first professionally recorded project. Yeah, yeah. And Other side of that. it's crazy. It's crazy the it effect that, like, that the best part is just ahead of you, which is when you start working with other talented people. That's when mm -hmm. you start to feel like you don't belong because you're like, holy, like this guy or girl, like whatever, what, it's just it's so much more talented than me, and I don't deserve to be here. And <laughs> right? then they tell you the exact same thing. <laughs> and you're like, what is happening? It's so, it's really humbling, man. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's how we made the base game work, like, in general, because we all have so much respect for each other as artists. Yeah. I've come and to realize yeah. that in talking to all of you guys and, and bef befriending y'all, y'all have so much, like, respect and reverence for each other and your talent. Yeah. We definitely do. And it pushes us forward with the work because it kind of is attributed to flexing <laughs> in a weird way <laughs> because... We have so much respect for each other. We constantly want to, like, uh, blow each other's minds, you know? It's like, <laughs> is, impress each other. Is that not, like, the... F individual. Isn't that kind of fun to do? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and we always love it. But then we want to do it more. And then we push our... Like, the, the whole group just goes forward like this. We're like, we're going to do it. And we're like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it because you guys are doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a bit of an um, impression war at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still so much fun. It's we have so much love. You didn't expect the base gang to grow that much, did you? Not at all. That wasn't even a thought. Even after we had released the album, two years ago, I remember. I remember listening to your music. That's from two years ago, and it this was being uploaded on individual channels at mm -hmm. this point. It, base gang it didn't even yeah. exist yet. It was just a title. Didn't plan on on it to be a thing. So if you, if if I could tell you. If I was able to travel through time and tell you two years ago that you were going to be working with Tim Faust, would you have believed me? I would. I was really self-confident. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably just say it because, but uh, I I probably would imagine it if ever, then per later than in two years. That That's something that was way too close mm -hmm. for me to think about, like, Something would have to blow up. That would be on the only reason I could think of. Like, I would make a song and then it's going to explode. Yeah. But it's, yeah, I wouldn't think of Bass Gang. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so cool. Like, the Bass Gang is their own entity and it, they've made a name for themselves. You guys have yeah, made a name for yourselves yeah. in the acapella industry for sure. Yeah, I'm but, so glad it made such an impact in the bass community. <sighs> down a rabbit hole there um so <laughs> <laughs> do you play any instruments so this is not immediately obvious to me so uh, i know you mentioned you played guitar a while back yeah what are, are there any other instruments that you play oh yeah well primarily i would say oh, um i play piano well but i haven't done it for like two years like actively because i yeah. don't have a piano uh, oh maybe even more than that Oh uh, yeah, but uh, so I was training piano for like seven years, I, I think, when mm, I was a kid, and that's it's still cool. my favorite instrument. It is so much fun to play, so I have to get one very soon. Uh, but guitar, yeah, that just like for chords, I don't, I can do uh, any of the mm -hmm. pedio stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, just... these two, I don't think nothing else. Gotcha, gotcha. It's those are like those are just some very underrated instruments too. They they seem like they seem very saturated in the music industry, but they are truly mm -hmm. some of the best. Oh yeah, with modern keyboards you can do anything. Literally anything. Yep. I mean, if you have you still a piano. <laughs> ha, have you seen have you seen that uh, recent video that Charlie Puth did where he made music with a cup? 
Uh, I saw a couple of his videos. I don't remember any. There was videos, one. But... There was one where he was on uh, an inter- he was on a on a show. I believe it was Jimmy Fallon in in the United States one okay. night, and he takes a mug and a spoon and taps a few times, gets a few pitches, and yeah. then he. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he literally builds an entire song on a talk show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't remember the music, but that it's, was so much fun. It's so crazy to think that a piano can do that. It is. Yeah, it is, it is insane. And that's the technology. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, there's some insanely cool pieces of technology, man, I'll tell you. I, me me, and uh, Tommy were talking off camera briefly. I had mentioned that I I don't partic- I have a particular love hate relationship for technology, but whenever it works, like whenever you got stuff like like that, you can tune a piano. You can put like a cup sound on a piano, make music with it. That is just it's crazy it's, cool. Yeah, it's the coolest it's thing. Let's see. Moving away from music for a second, so in Ooh. your internet life. Or away from your internet life and music life, what are some people? What are some things that people may not know about you? In my personal life, what, like basically, like in the life that p- most people don't see. So, like in your day to day life or just anything about you, what are some things that people might not know about you? Huh. Um. Well. <laughs> Any random facts? I can, I can solve a Rubik's cube in fifteen seconds. Excuse so me. What? That- that's something not that common. Yeah, that's that's like yeah. I don't know anyone that can Patreon do that. Know that because I was and probably from my YouTube channel I was doing it on stream, by like back in the day, like three years ago. But I don't think most people know. <laughs> Fifteen seconds isn't isn't yeah. that close to a world record? No, no, no. That's like for two point eight or something. That that's way too 2. in the, another dimension. <laughs> I can show you if you want to. Oh, okay, you, you know what? If you've got if you've got one, well, I've got yeah, the time exactly. to watch. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, okay. is. I'd be that person that literally sits there and fidgets with it for two hours. Yeah, all this thing. Yes. Well, I'm gonna have to turn the lights. Well, no, I can see the coast pretty well. Hey. This is a special treat, guys. You don't normally get to do stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> Most people don't do stuff like this on stream. Or on the podcast. Oh, well, <laughs> well, let's see how fast he can do it. All right. Just, oh, I don't want to put a stopwatch, but... I oh, there ain't no stopwatch. I'm just watching. All right. Okay. <laughs> that thing is moving so fast. There we go. <laughs> wow. Gosh. Uh, that is crazy. Thank you, dude. <laughs> that is crazy. Like yeah, It is one of those skills that you're never going to use in any aspect of your life. Except no. for situations like this. <laughs> and Just I spend years people. learning it. So. <laughs> spend years learning something that's not gonna make any difference in your life yep <laughs> gotta love it that's, that's just my life in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome I man uh these logical things are just like even the sudokus i was doing in them so hardcore once <laughs> it's just my brain is just i don't know i like math <laughs> <laughs> i've always questioned the sanity of people that love math it just i don't know i was good at it so i mean I if you're good at it yeah yeah, to be fair. What yeah, so what are, what are some things you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording, performances, etc.? Uh well, I go I, I do my job which for the past oh, like two no, like 3 to 4 months for the, for the past 3 to 4 months my job is uh was now a web developer. Okay. Uh, which I started pretty recently. I learned a new trade, and it yeah it it is pretty useful and it 
tons of good money and I really enjoy doing it and I think I'm uh, better at it every day so that's kind of my main focus right now because you know it, what pays bills <laughs> that's what you're yeah and and that's what pays your that's what pays your bills and that's your daily job then yes yes that's yeah. my daily nine to five job there you go and the um you're hoping to one day make your living off of music of course right oh uh, that is a there's a big topic if you want me to open it <laughs> If we, if you got time, I got time. I got time. All right. Well, that's just something that I actually haven't talked about with. I don't think any anybody. I just like uh, think about it all the time. But uh, with the with music and like the bass gang and everyday job, it is just something that it changes over time. Mm -hmm. Like the the thing that you see yourself as, uh, like do do seeing yourself doing it in like two years, yeah. Because like for at one point when I was like arranging the kind of sound of silence, you know, mm -hmm. and oh even the early like twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, like it was the arranging was always <laughs> the same. I just write the sheet music and then record stuff and then I edit it and mix it myself. I film a video with somebody and just. I just do it. And that was the process every time. And yeah. you're just like, like even I can create uh, new interesting music and figure mm -hmm. out something new with the arranging. The other things in the process are completely the same every yeah. time. So it gets, it gets I, pretty yeah, monotonous. I yeah. New. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I started doing a new, new form of like, I tried the album, uh, like not really making content for YouTube, but I was like for like nine months straight. I was working on uh, night songs for the album that I wanted to release. Right. And then I did, and it was kind of like a. It's out, but it's like, it is a big expectation that's not gonna deliver probably with your first. Fair and, enough. And uh, then like doing the stuff like unholy with like a different bit of style. I'm trying new style right now, but I want to change it up a little bit because the old stuff. Old way of doing things wasn't really my thing anymore, mm -hmm. and it probably changes like that all the time. So I have no idea, like, if this is something that I'm gonna be doing in three years. But uh, if I could, that would be sick. Right now, I would probably prefer to do it with the bass gang because that is so much fun, and I love mm -hmm. these dudes, and I cannot wait until we meet each other. It's just so much fun to make music with these. And other like other people than just by yourself yeah and that's you don't really have as much of a imposter syndrome kind of situation whenever you're working with other people it's it's not as pre prevalent yeah. i guess you could say yeah it's not not really there you know you can add a lot to the to the process right and yeah you, do, you will know the situations when it when they call for it so mm -hmm. <laughs> by uh just doing the stuff kind of kind of good so just uh floating by right now not really changing anything yeah yeah i'm focusing more on the bass game on the, on yeah. the music side but like main focus right now is like just get my life together because i was moving like two weeks ago mm -hmm. this is my new room like pretty fresh uh i was i still need to go through the surgery that i have planned for the next month and pay the bills for this when mm -hmm. i do then like i'm like okay let's get back into the stream you know work music mm -hmm. and not work. stress about these things so yeah that's fair things. that's fair that's fair understandable yeah everybody has been this you know yeah definitely <laughs> How often do you, uh, moving on to some more music stuff now, um, how often do you practice singing throughout the week and how long do you typically practice for? <clears throat> oh, I don't have like an, like official practices. Like that is very rare that I just sit down like, okay, I'm going to do these exercises. I'm going to try this stuff, sing these songs. And then like, that's my lesson. I, I mm -hmm. don't really do that. I just kind of sing and try some stuff like, or when I can, like if, if I'm at work, then like go, I, when I go to the bathroom, uh, I, I just like 
And I just start basing to myself, and probably a lot of people probably hear me, but I don't think. <laughs> just, just kind of basing on the go or singing on yeah, the go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a singing high, of course, like with the music that I have, and practicing with uh, like shots, rehearsals, mm -hmm. and then recording. So that's just the usual singing activity guy again. Oh, karaoke bars. That's that's one. <laughs> that is one. When I have a practice, guy. Next next day, always I have like G ones, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's that's the beautiful mornings. Yeah, morning voices, man. <laughs> yeah, especially after karaoke night with alcohol. Yeah, I've heard that also makes an effect on the low. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. How often do you practice? Well, you, I just asked that. What does your warm up routine look like on any given day? So, like, if you're going to record, what does your warm up routine look like? I'm a bass. I think does that need an answer? <laughs> <laughs> we don't really do warm ups <laughs> because the more you do them, this the the down part is going to disappear. You know, right. Like yeah. So I I usually just like maybe do a couple of. I don't know, like, for example, today before the recording we had, we recorded, tried to record four songs, but we ended up doing three. And one of them, I was just, like, driving in my car. I was just like, dum, bidum, dum, bidum, dum. I was just basing to myself. And Basically just doing, like, warm a walking shower. Oh my God. <coughs> Warm shower is the best uh, warm-up you can have. <laughs> really? Just, just, yeah, just just the warm warm water, hot water. And every muscle is going to just relax for the next at least 30 minutes. Depends on how much you flex it. That's pretty That's cool. Perfect. I've never yeah. noticed that trend, but I'll have to try that now. You have to you have to be there at least like 10 minutes to take effect. Dude, I tell you, I take back like 20, 25 minute showers. Ooh, so. Yay. That's yeah, the one. <laughs> I, take, I take the long, hot showers. Ah. Oh. This, it, it, this. You can't, you can't beat it, man. It's the best. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to uh, range. So, Ooh. for those that don't know, what are your record high and record low chest notes? Thank you for <clears throat> specifying. <laughs> <laughs> record high? Goddamn! I remember actually measuring it, and I did it what. I was like in a car when I was like 19 or something. And it was like a something like C5, C sharp 5, something between those two. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was trash as hell. <laughs> like you couldn't use it anywhere. I just like squeaked it out. And I know it was like in the uh, chest range, like without using any, any head voice support. Yeah. And uh, for the lows, it's hard, hard to tell, dude. Like back then I would, clearly tell you what what it is because it was a g sharp one for a long time mm -hmm. but like after sometimes when you do chest fry and you just practice it a lot then yeah it's kind of start to connect you don't even know when it starts or when it ends it's just <laughs> right yeah it so it is hard to pick up but i remember having uh having a g1 couple of days ago <laughs> after like a like Ooh. a night out Ooh um yeah, it uh, there's probably I'm sure I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> what's your like da really. what's your daily usable for those that don't know? They like just pure chest. Mm -hmm. Well, I could probably do a B one every time I want to record, but uh usually depends on how in what quality I want them. So I sometimes I prefer to do them like with chest fry because it just sounds better mm -hmm. but yeah b1 would probably go b1 but was where you about bottom out on on a usable day anyway what like a, as no like um so b1 is about where you're comfortable like with your low yeah. range maybe not maybe not comfortable because if you're talking live if i like i would go sing live mm -hmm. on, a, on a mic just like sequence mm -hmm. just like a concert with my vocal band i would like the ner nervous was I, w I would be nervous <laughs> that's <laughs> what i was meant to say and uh yeah it 
probably like C sharps for that. Like that would be probably comfortable for me. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What's your highest um, daily usable? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at the the noise. <laughs> that was that was literally I do a lot of noises. Just get used. To that was like a growl, chest fry, and chest all at once. Oh, I don't know funny. how it sounded on your side. That, that sounded hilarious. You know, yeah. <laughs> that was sounded funny. But anyway. Um, well, for recordings, I would probably every day I would trust myself to like warm myself up for G Sharp 4. Okay. Okay. And still willing to put it out like as a recording. But for life, I would probably not want... I don't really want to sing anything above F4. But if I have like like G4 some, sometimes, mm -hmm. I actually written myself a G4 for one of my original songs that we do with my vocal band. Yeah. And, and it's so much fun because the whole song is built to do that G4. <laughs> like, it is structured <laughs> in a way that I just started with like... Do, 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 like a mid range, mm -hmm. and then I go into the da, 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 and then it's slowly do, 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 and then da, and then <laughs> and just you, out you there are so G1 relaxed, guy. and you have the agility to just push into the G. It's, it is so that's fun. pretty cool. That's pretty cool, man. Do you have a recording of this? Not yet. We're gonna be definitely doing a recording of it probably for the next album, which is gonna be. I guess 2024. So you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we don't know yet, so don't count on it. But we'll see. We'll see. That's gonna be cool, man. We're definitely doing more music. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Well, who who are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collaborated with, or in this case, the Bass Gang has collaborated with? Oh, come on. <laughs> Do I need to say it? <laughs> Do I need to say it out loud? <laughs> Fools! Uh, but <laughs> like for me personally, as a uh, the best interaction I had with the collaborator, um, uh, I didn't do that many for my own channel. Like especially not in the in the context and in the size and quality of the base game mm -hmm. and the management. And the best uh, time I had with the collaborator was probably Elliot Robinson because it was my song that he was doing. Uh, same with Tim, like it was my arrangement that he was singing. I, I got two home free bases, baby. <laughs> That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it is so cool. <laughs> Geeking, <laughs> Geeking out a little bit, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, but with with Tim, he was communicating through either emails with our manager or with Peter. Mm -hmm. Oh, like by text, and so I didn't really have any communication with him. So for me, it was gr like he provided great material. He was so so good uh, to us uh, when the like considering the promotion for the video. Mm -hmm. Like he had so many like ideas of his own, how to, uh, where to put it and what to do. Mm -hmm. So that was absolutely amazing. But like as a personal contact, I had much more of that with Elliot, and. He's just such a dope person. Like we were emailing back and forth. Even like, uh, I told him I'm gonna text you when the mix is finished, and and he's like, yeah, dope, dude, thanks. And then I'm like, dude, I just made this section, and it is so good. Like, just just check it out. And he's like, oh man, that is so cool. And he was just <laughs> yeah. like into the project so much. So yeah, he was definitely fun to work with, and oh, uh, good friend to make, good new friend. I agree. Industry. I've been trying to. I've been talking to him about having him on the on the channel, and it's cool, dude. Definitely do that. He's so chill. I I agree. Um, we we've been talking back and forth for a while now about getting him on, and he's he's just a, he's very he's a very hardworking, very humble person. Yes, yes, but uh, trust me, his voice is not humble. Like he's gonna destroy <laughs> you. It's gonna be hey, and you're gonna be like. I don't know if I can do a whole fucking interview without <laughs> commenting on your voice every 20 seconds. <laughs> every 20 seconds, man. He's got one of the yeah. lowest voices alive right now. Yeah. Notice, folks, I made a bold claim, but notice there's a caveat. I said people that are alive. Among the lowest, there are people that are alive. 
just FYI. That's not comparing him to the greats that have passed on. So. <clears throat> oh, well, but there's JD. So. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but yeah. I mean, Elliot has an has an everyday what F one, E one somewhere like that, there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I mean, just to say it, it is. Ugh. It's crazy to think about, man. Yeah. And the high range. Oh. Bro. He's got a he's got a solid high range for a profundo. Yeah, it is insane. Like as a, as a bass who also sings live, the stuff that he can do just on a spot is it is so accurate. It is so accurate. It sounds perfect. Like it projects the bass the way you want it, mm -hmm. and it can go so low. Like for example, I don't know. Like if you would probably take Bobby, and I don't want to like. This is not a, a, nothing against Bobby. He's he has one of the deepest voices I've ever seen, and he had like F sharps chest, F sharp ones, G ones. But if you would give him like a bass line, it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, but with like a G sharps and uh, F sharps or something. Yeah, it's probably no go. Like it's a mm -hmm. it's way too low. But Elliot is just like anything. Give me. And I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> it's, it's so it's crazy. Annoying. It's, it's, it is, yeah. Sometimes to work with these people, it is just one surprise after another. And they're like, oh, this is what I inspired to sound like one day. Right. Ex exactly, man. Mm. Okie doke. Let's see. There's another part to that question. Uh, where, what, 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 let's see. What are your, who would you like to collaborate with in the future, both in your individual work as well as the bass gang? Oh, well, as a bass <laughs> gang, Jeff. Like, that is for sure. We have to get there. That is just like a... It would be so awesome. Because Jeff is my most recent, probably, inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, well, kind of because... Yeah. Yeah, he definitely is. Uh, and... Uh, but for myself, I would really, really love so much to sing with Abby. But... Not like not even a recording, just live, just sing a song together. Like there's something I would, yeah, that would be the best moment of my life and the most beautiful music I would be a part of ever. He he's truly he's truly a big name in the music industry and yeah he's he holds a lot of musical value. Yes, yeah, like the, 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 his style nowadays is absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it really is he, man has taken off ever since he went and here he split off from pentatonix he's like he's yeah. truly among the greats he's so good mm -hmm. yeah. he was even back him. then but in the category of basing in a yeah. of, and now like when he did his own stuff and it's like a butterfly it's it's pretty awesome man um for anyone that's listening um are there attempts being made to try trying to work with Jeff in the future in base game? Oh, uh, that's not something I can disclose. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But like, we are definitely making an effort to like, uh, get something like this to happen one day, in one way or another. Like, this yeah, it's probably gonna happen one day. Right, and at the like, end of the if day, if I'm honest, I don't really know. Like, or uh, not if you plan it, but like. If it's a, like if it's happening ever so so basically um for for those that don't know i'm not trying to get uh information that i'm not supposed to have it's more so i'm i'm prying in a way that doesn't break an nda so i'm more i'm more just like our our efforts being made for this to to happen and um so basically what he's saying in NDA, for in NDA terms, he's being cryptic on purpose. But what he's saying is, efforts are being made, and he's hopeful that it will happen. Kind of, you could Pretty say much. that. Yeah. Well, it's like you, you're like as a good journalist, you have to ask the difficult questions. Yes, and if we fail, then that's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I disclose so much personal stuff. <laughs> hey, I mean, if that's if you're willing to tell us, then that's what that's what Hell it's yeah. all about. I'm, I've always been an open person, so yeah, me too. Anything. 
All right, let's see. Just a few more and then we'll jump to a quick break. Um, what is the funniest memory you have from working with the base game? <laughs> There's so many, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like... Definitely, there's way more with just like Marwan and Casper, which would like us like the half of the base gang, the Europe slash Africa half of the base gang. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's we had so much fun and have every day on Discord, uh, and with our projects in in real life as well with Casper. And but yeah. with like the whole group, there's there's definitely like every time we talk to each other, we just call. Well, we just uh, laugh all the time, but I, I cannot remember like anything specific right now. I I will say I have to I have to bring to light one of my favorite moments of all time between you guys, and that was the um, acapella Jeopardy that's on Casper's channel. Yeah, that one was fun. That one was definitely <laughs> fun. Yeah, those are hilarious to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just a fun activity that. that Casper, Casper came up with like what when what is happening in the calls usually <laughs> like another level <laughs> I was my favorite part of that one particular one that I watched was just watching everyone pull an E1 out of their butt like it was nothing oh yeah yeah that was fun <laughs> and my one like let me get the E1 <laughs> how did I how did like how the heck did y'all just I don't know if I can do it. E one, then he does it, and then he goes lower. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's this my one in a nutshell. Like, <laughs> is that that is the craziest thing ever, man. I, I, I laughed so hard. I wasn't even laughing at y'all per se. I was just laughing at the fact there was so much talent in the room. I was surprised that the room didn't explode. Oh, dude. It's just it's just what we've been doing for a long time. So you it's... gotta have it at least at one technique. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, re I remember some situations right now when it, it's always hilarious and it happens all the time. <laughs> we just we just have a call and Casper is laying down the agenda and we are talking about specific stuff like in the financial world and the plans yeah. for the future collaborators, projects, anything. Yeah. And Bobby is usually somewhere like outside. He's like in the restaurant. He's like <laughs> walking outside. He's with his friends. <laughs> He's with his girlfriend. Sometimes he's by his desk. Like sometimes he wasn't like in a cellar and there was a fucking there was a pool there. <laughs> like a pool table. Uh and we're like, yeah, sure. Like he's having an adventurous life. But sometimes because of the environment, we are talking and we are all at our computers every time, the same place, headphones, mics. <laughs> and Bobby is just out. Out and doing his thing. Talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and we say like, uh, I don't know, like how how is the how is the this song going, Bobby? And we're like, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and and then then somebody makes the conscious decision of like, oh well, Bobby's not here, so let's just talk about something else. <laughs> and then in ten seconds, he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and those are the best moments dude, of the of the calls. Like I love Bobby so much. <laughs> But he has so much going on sometimes. Bobby, you slacking? <laughs> I'm kidding. We love you, Bobby. Yeah, like when 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 he needs to, he's always present. He's he's awesome, man. Yeah. Definitely a card. Oh, by man. by this point, we're just friends, like <laughs> all of us. Like it it might, it might start as like, okay, we're gonna work together. We're gonna try to be polite and like nice and yeah. just hold ourselves back a little bit, you know, and. Then it's just blew off. <laughs> it just it's just completely it just turned into like a family yeah. thing at this point. Yeah, as it happens with friends. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, man. Like that. All right. This one's back into music a little bit. So what are your thoughts on extended techniques in music? So we obviously know that you use several of them and as well as everyone else in the bass gang. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on extended techniques? Well, they are awesome. Like what can I say? It's <clears throat> what makes me uh, uh makes me be able to do like sort of notes that i could never do ever oh uh, with just my normal voice mm -hmm. and uh so so many of them so many different qualities like to the sound then you can use them in any situation pro probably 
like I tried so many oh, different stuff to to do with your voice, like especially the lower part. If you mm -hmm. try to growl for like a cinematic booms, like some people call it, yeah, uh, that is absolutely awesome. Just doing the <laughs> the slide. <laughs> Sorry, that was. <laughs> I've always been just guys. I'm sorry. I've always been a geek for Tommy in particular. His grouse, like he to oh, me, goodness. to me, he has some of the just most monstrous growls I have ever heard. Oh, that was my heart, dude. Thank I, you so much. <laughs> I would, I would put you up there with Tim as far as the growl level. Whoa, like that is like <laughs> with all the growl slides I've heard in all the music across casper across the bass gang your own music yeah. of all of that i just i hear the growl and i I'm can do like, pretty good slides yeah that is true the <laughs> slides are insane thank you like i will i'll be listening to music on repeat like i have an acapella playlist and i'll put, throw yeah. a bunch of bass gang music in there i'll throw some of your music and all kinds of stuff in there but whenever yeah. i hear those those slides like those are so good i cannot i cannot do that i have to do it with inhale like i can't do it any other way yeah, and slides with inhale are very, very hard stuff. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of it always, it, it it seems never to go like this. It just goes like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, like I've a, noticed my parts, and it is so frustrating. So yeah, growl is a must for these. <laughs> they that is so cool, man. Oh, for me, well, give me anything. I I'm gonna try to do my best. <laughs> I, I, I'm still working on my growls. Like the best I can do is like I can growl I can growl a G one sometimes. Oh. But it's so mine are extremely airy. Mine's mine's got tons of air. Mine mine are airy as well, but like this mic is pretty good for picking up the birds. It's yours just seems to cut out the higher frequencies pretty good on uh growls. A little bit. But like for example in our vocal band, our baritone uh Dalibor <laughs> He's he doesn't have that like low chest voice like he oh kind of ends on E2 most days, mm -hmm. but his growls are insane. <laughs> I don't get it. Like he just goes and he he does like E1 in growl, but it doesn't sound like like a airy like right. that. Just the bass frequency. It actually it sounds really like sharp, a note. Like, <laughs> it is so. It is insane. Like he can, he can, he can break the speakers probably more efficiently than I, I, I can. <laughs> he just doesn't have like bassy mic. That that's just because that's my role. <laughs> whenever you say like, whenever you talk about him, I think of Tim's performance with Home Free on that show several years ago. The one oh, where he goes, yeah, I know. It just sounds about. so meaty. He cups the mic and he just goes, "Whoa, it's crazy." That was that was a. Like I think that thing that he did was like a, from a fry to like a chest fry chest because you cannot really connect growl with chest like that. No, that I, I guess that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, but, it, was, it was insane and low, like a CGO or something. There was, uh, I don't know where I was going there. It would not be tradition. It would not be a. Vo I can't talk. It would not be a vocast video if I didn't stumble on my words multiple times. <laughs> but, um. I was oh, going to say, so for those that don't know, what extended techniques are you able to do? So I know, but what, for those that don't. Um, well, there is a, a chest fry. There is a normal fry. I guess it's the same thing right now. Uh, there is growl, some harmonics, inhale. And then we go, then we have the two different kinds of throat bass. And yeah, that's it. And then the higher ones as well, some, but for the lower ones, that's these ones. So I think I'm going to start doing this in my future podcast as well. But mm -hmm. if you're able to do extended techniques, can you give us a brief example of you performing these set oh, techniques? Oh, yeah. Hell <laughs> yes. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I'm going to do something, some interesting experiment that I did once for TikTok and it kind of worked. And it's like, I'm going to try to do one specific note in every register that I can. Oh, okay. That's cool. All right. Let's do it. And I think today it could be a B flat one. So hopefully, which is. 
It's kind almost of a, an A. Almost. It, yeah, it is. It is in a weird, weird spot for the chess one. And with the chess fight, it's more. Da, da, da. Yeah, something like that. Oh, growl. Home. Oh. Yeah, that will be for growl. That's nice. <laughs> I don't know if subs can be. No. Oh. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's the subs. Inhale is going to be probably the hardest. Yes. No. Oh. Okay, I'm pretty good. <laughs> nice. That was nice. <laughs> um, oh, and the throat bases. These are hard. <clears throat> For one of them, is really. One of them is kind of quiet, which is like. Ooh, that's cool. High. But the other one is taught by Janet, Jonathan Young. Thank you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and that other one is now like a. Hey, hey. It's not really there right now. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, hey. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. It, it's really hard. I didn't realize that I could do throat bass, but I like, with all the knowledge I've gained recently, I'm like, oh, I can mm. do, apparently do throat bass. Whoa. Hold on. Mm. Every time we need to, it, it just. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work right Ooh, now. But... There was a throat sub, though. It, it happens Ooh. sometimes. Yeah, and it's so much fun because you can actually, like, that is one of the bass techniques that is actually pretty loud. Which is so rare. Yeah. Even if you, when, especially if the, you learn this when you go to karaoke bars, because everybody who can sing high is just the star of the bar because mm -hmm. it's just loud as fuck. Right. I'm sorry. I don't know if I, if I can swear. No worries. No worries. All hey, right. I, I've got a sensor I run on, on all of them, so no worries. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So everybody, Casper is always crushing it. And he's so like even like the squeaky kind of quality of his voice, it yeah. just pierces through everybody's ears, and is there like what? And then I go <laughs> with like a birds flying high, you know how it be. And some of them in the front are like, oh, I can hear something. <laughs> I hear I hear a buzzing noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's just the mics in in karaoke bars, you know. So if you do like a, oh yeah 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 yeah. Everybody's like, oh, oh, oh yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Extended techniques are amazing. Yeah. So Love much them. fun. Love them. Uh, can I have ask a question for you? Yeah, go for it. Like in this topic. Uh, have you ever done, uh, well, first I ask, how many of these techniques can you do? Let's see. Chest fry. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So, chest fry, okay. uh, it's not as good right now. It, it's not projectable mm -hmm. at the moment. I can do subs. I'm working on it. Those, my subs kind of suck. I'm, oh, come on. I have recorded a couple of times where I have, I have had, I had a 10 second sustained C sharp D flat one. I have a <laughs> unintentional, I was... So to give you a touch of backstory for this, I was, yeah. I have been stuck at a B1 for years. Like as a chest or as your chest? Yeah. Oh, okay. Or, um, uh, yeah, B1 chest is, that's the yeah. one I'm stuck at. And I've been trying so hard just to get that half step to the B flat. I'm trying, I've been trying so hard for so long. It's, it's literally been like six or seven years at this point. So oh. one morning... One morning, a couple months ago, I just decided my voice is feeling great. I had a little bit of vocal trauma the night before. I woke hey. up. My voice was so freaking close. It literally sounded like a really sharp B flat. But it still wasn't quite there. Still was not quite there. I was pushing yeah. I was pushing so hard for this note. That I forced my voice into a B flat zero sub for like a half a second, and I didn't even mean to. <laughs> That's the funniest thing. That is that is that is such a. Uh, I, I, I can coincidence. <laughs> I, I cannot. I cannot do that again. There's no not right now. At least it'll probably be a few years down the road those, before those I can do that again. Moments. Yeah, <laughs> I've done one B. I've That's done single. 
I've done one B zero once, but that was like for like another half a second. One of my the easiest subs I can do are at the top of the first octave, so B flats, A, A sharp, you know, like you know stuff like that. So, so I can do my B flat easy. Uh, G, G is like my most reliable one usually. Yeah, it's not coming right now, but <clears throat> it's, it's fine. <laughs> I did have a pretty monstrous F one one day, but it's been a while. So oh yeah, yeah. So oh, so is it is it four? Let's see. What's the question? Oh, so how many techniques can? Uh, let's see. So I've got chest fry. Uh, I just tried to just sub. How do you have it? Uh, so yeah, I have I have chest fry. I can do that any day. It's just days where it sounds better. Uh, subs, mm -hmm. I can do that mostly every day, but there are better days. Uh, inhale all day, every day. Preferred technique. Yeah. <laughs> I can do throat bass when my voice is cooperating. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And have it, has it ever happened to you that like some, uh, you tried to like flex your techniques uh, in front of somebody who doesn't understand them at all like somebody from not our community or vocal <laughs> community or singing community yes i've done, like if I've so done. tell me the story please <laughs> oh my gosh so um some of the re reactions i've gotten from inhale bass is it's just absolutely hilarious i started using these in like just in like friends groups so i would be i'd just be sitting there i'd be singing or whatever or somebody would be singing and then I would just pull an inhaled bass out of bass note out of nowhere, and then I'd just drop it down to like to, I don't know like a C sharp or something. Ooh. And then they'd be like, they would just <laughs> make the dumbest faces, and they're like, "Did that just come out of you?" And I'm like, "Yes." I mean, I I would just so oh. I, I there was another time too, I. I did y'all's rendition, the Bass Gang's cover of uh, Hide and Seek, where Marwan smashes that C-sharp. Oh, yeah. I did that for a friend of mine, for a few friends of mine, actually, but I did that with Inhale, and they were just like... <laughs> they they were speechless. Yes, we all That's, were. And I'm just like, how... Their people are like, how do you do that? And I'm like, part of me wants to tell them, and part of me doesn't. <laughs> yeah because once I they always try to teach them because it's a sweet five minutes until they are lose interest <laughs> right but the coolest thing is this is just for me i i prefer inhale because the fact that i can i can simply do anything i can do anything, anything. i can literally just uh, <laughs> You should just go into the neg. You can almost go to the negative octaves on command. Well, yeah, negatives. Yeah, that's kind of hard to maintain the stability of it because you don't even know if it's stable. <laughs> that's more than you can do anything. It's just it's so maintaining one particular pitch is very difficult. But yeah, especially when the higher you get. <laughs> So I mean I can just I can stop anywhere yeah, I want yeah. to, but yeah, yeah, I, I it's it's good for like a kind of like a shot bass sound like a do do. It's very good for that. Yeah, I've noticed something else that it's good for sustained pitches. If you if you really try to hold the or try to hold the pitch, mm -hmm. try to hold the stability of the pitch as much as you can. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed that if you're trying to vocalize, so if you're trying to speak, it's it can sound a little weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People be like, "Okay, something's weird with his voice." When you go home, because it's 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 hard to pronounce some of the letters. No. What like it's impossible, kind of, when you're in, inhaling. Yeah, like, there's there's a um, like S sounds so weird. Like, like <laughs> it's very weird. The S sound, I think, like other sounds that require your tongue to touch the top of your mouth. So like P or T. You can't really do it in inhale. I've noticed. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it has its restrictions, but nobody, 
Like if, if you're really in a, using inhale in a lead singing words, then you're probably doing like a like some metal stuff. Some you have to do something stuff. metal yeah. or you have to really you'd have to bounce back and forth between that exhale singing and inhale very, very quickly. Dad, I've never heard that before. Dude. You've never tried doing that? I, I tried, but I've never heard that in professional music ever done. I've I think that I may try this in one of my upcoming pieces that I'm working on. Oh, that would be such a good instrument, like, dude. Like try to do like a like a really low part, and then like back yeah. to uh ch back to regular chest, the back to inhale, you know, bounce back mm -hmm. and forth, see if I how good I can make it sound. So that way I can phonate using these SPTs and other sounds that require the yeah, tongue it position. Can be done, yeah. <clears throat> Some people can do it. I don't know how, but they can. I want to try to mess with it later and see what I can do but oh, yeah. way works. down a rabbit hole for extended techniques there. <laughs> so two more yeah. and then uh, we'll have a bit of a break. So this one's not immediately obvious to me. So do you have perfect pitch? No, definitely not. Definitely right. not. Okay. If you play me a note, like at that moment, I can maybe tell you in what kind of octaves it, it is <laughs> <laughs> but uh then if i sing it to myself i can tell you with more precision and when i have enough time i usually get it uh with like maybe one semitone off like maybe sometimes okay so okay. i can get there with so like relative, some relative pitch, then. pitch yeah kind of but with like relative not to the chords or notes before or after what i heard but yeah by my own voice like relatively of what i know is my bottoms and what i can do yeah 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 gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. and i've it's something that i've come across in like a bunch of like in interviewing these people on my channel and such and just listening to music in general hearing people talk i'll hear them say that there's so many people that don't actually have pitch or like perfect pitch and i'm like that's I th there's so many people I thought that actually did have it or oh. would have had it. <clears throat> yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, man. Awesome. It's a cool thing. Um, last one. This one's of this one's pretty broad. I'm not sure how hard this Wait, is going to be. Do you answer. have a perfect pitch? I've been told I do. What? I've, you <clears throat> <laughs> like I don't I, know if somebody can tell you i mean like happen. so like i've i've had people like play notes for me and then i can i can call them out almost instantly and i've okay. been told that that's, that's what really? that's i've been told that's what that is so okay so <laughs> nice dude so if you can do that's a great skill to help b b flat one or b flat two mm, uh pull a random pitch okay Oops. d Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yep. Hmm. D. That's a D three. Uh. Yeah. Oh, D four. Uh. Okay. Uh, Let me give you something else. Else. Just messing with your relative uh, pitch. <laughs> okay. Do this. Hmm. A flat. Okay. <laughs> a That's pretty good. A I'm convinced. <laughs> a flat three. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I've been told, though. That was fast, yeah. I expected slow. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right. So, um, last one. This one's pretty broad. Uh, what is one of your th favorite things about being a singer or just being a musician? If there's any one thing that's your favorite thing. Oh, well, girls love it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that, that's one of those things is definitely up there. Yeah, for sure. Um, best and the my favorite thing about being probably the people I can uh, work with. And I don't know, I just love singing. Like the, the I don't know, just, just singing. Like It's just <laughs> being really able to do it. I like it very much. Not being, not having the per, not being the person that can't carry a tune in a bucket. What do you mean? So basically, what it means is like not being able to sing. So not being yeah. able to carry a tune in the bucket. So that's a saying over here in the southern United States. When someone, okay. when someone's being derogatory and they'll say that someone can't sing, they'll say they can't carry a tune in a bucket. 
Oh, that is. But but it's 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 crazy, isn't it? Like crazy to think that when you used to think you couldn't sing and you actually can. Yeah, well, I couldn't. <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't just thinking. I knew it, and I got told by a lot of people. Yeah, but you can learn it. It's it's, it's a skill. The fact that you're able to like, and everyone can sing, but like the fact that you already have a little bit of a base to start off with with singing, like you you already have a voice. It's, yeah, you know it's it's really it's really nice you to have be to able have to the hear. timbre, the like the signature of your muscles <laughs> and plus we also we take it for granted every day some some of us like are just not going to be able to sing medically like some people just yeah. don't have the ability to and so, somebody can but their voice is just terrible like they just... Some, sometimes like that or if they have a medical condition where that just limits their ability yeah. to speak or that's very rare though yeah but it's just it's the ability to sing regardless it's just it's amazing it is it is and you, everybody has to utilize what they have. And that's what makes it good. Yeah. So, so yeah, I just, I just love doing it. I just love singing, experimenting with the voice, like doing a special, like, oh, I love like doing vocal runs. That is like one of my favorite things to just do vocal runs. <laughs> they are so much fun. Yeah, they are very Especially fun. when you're like, especially when you're on pitch. Yeah, that is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're just sitting there doing runs or if you're just doing random runs but like if you do like if you're actually like on pitch and you're doing the run like you want to do it it's it's such yeah. a satisfying feeling yeah 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 that's so good <sighs> all right so that's the end of the traditional questions that we have <clears throat> so after we get through the traditional questions on the vocast what we do is we give you a a break from the flurry of questions on my end and give you a chance to ask me any, should you have any for me. So you have the floor for the next yeah, few yeah, minutes. Yeah. Sorry. No, <laughs> you have the floor for... <laughs> I told you I like to do that. <laughs> you have the floor for the next few minutes to ask me whatever questions you want. So Right now? Yeah, right now. You got as much time as you want to ask me oh, anything you want. The spot. Got him. Oh. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you can cut the video, I'm going to be thinking for two minutes and I'm not going to ask you. If we need to, can, we can I, cut. Can yeah. I get a drink, please? Can I get Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Folks, it. we'll have us a quick intermission and we'll be right back. All right, folks, we have returned from the intermission. So uh, this is your section to ask me any questions, should you have any. So you have the floor for the next few minutes. All right. Well, what do you plan for your next project? Music wise, well, what kind of direction you want to go? To? So my next project, well, it's going to be my my next one probably is going to be a continuation of what I did for my first project for the uh, Believer cover. I'm talking with okay. Fernie to about doing or finishing off the song, so like doing the whole thing, doing a whole cover. So we did the we did the short cover. It's like a minute and a half, and it turned out really well. And we're in talks to do the full version and a video. Okay. I don't know when this will happen, cool. but I'm hoping that we can get this knocked out sometime before the end of summer, maybe. Hell yeah, dude! That would be fun. Just enjoy it. Just have fun with it. <laughs> I've got a project that. I'm not going to say who I'm involved with. I'll tell you who I, I will tell you who in private message, but I don't want to say this on oh, the YouTube yeah, channel. No problem, dude. No problem. Um, that's also got Fernie in it um, that I'm mm. wanting to get done for Halloween. Okay. This is, it's going to be a, um, cosmology cooperation. I won't tell you exactly what song I'm covering, but I will say that it's it, it's a song that has Michael Jackson in it. Okay, I guess for Halloween I have an idea. <laughs> there's a few there's a few in there that you could that I could potentially be doing. So yeah. I'll leave that for I'll leave that for everyone to take a wild guess at what song we're okay. doing. I might have an idea actually about this cover. I might heard about it. You, you may it's have. All right, all right. We'll have to talk off camera and see if you do know. But um, <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, 
those are the two big or those are the two products i'm looking at right now i want to take on more i want to take on a lot more yeah but like I, right now i think it would be great just just like experiment and try to create something like out of thin air you could say like even inspired by something that you hear and just try to recreate it or to do something with it and you don't yeah. have to release it like just for yourself you know practice with the different special mixing like and editing techniques that that is what makes music usually <laughs> of course man but yeah as far as uh projects for music i'm looking at completing the cover of um believer and i'm hoping to have this halloween project done okay and nice nice I, i'm oh. and this is going this i'll i will say this on camera i'm maybe we could consider working together on something this year it depends on your availability oh uh, yeah the availability uh we will see like definitely not in the next few months because i am planning a lot of my stuff and i still yeah you know, like the life situation needs to be settled yeah of course so i don't know when i'm going to be opening the spot for like any collaborations basically because i don't do any except for casper because he lives two minutes away right right uh, but yeah so but for end of the year or or next year yeah we can definitely talk about something so you heard it here first folks it might be coming we'll see <laughs> but all right, yeah all those right. are my those are my biggest projects right now okay i'm i'm, I'm gonna check it out when it comes out and i need to check it out the uh, check out the uh believer short cover the um i don't, I don't remember seeing it but i'm gonna start experimenting curious. with some of my own music but that's if I like it, I'll release it, but it's going to go under the radar for now. All right, all right. Okay, second question. Go for it. Mm, do an A1. <laughs> <laughs> do what? Do an A1 right now. Do it. Do a what? A1. Oh, A1. Whoa. Right there, somewhere in there. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> A1. That was accurate. Yeah, that was that was pretty much spot on. I, I can't. I wonder if I can do a A1 sub. Let me try. Hang on. It was it. there. I got it. Nice. I got an A1. I'm a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> I got two different ways too. Let's go. Sweet. Uh, it's, it's just so good to have these techniques. It's so much fun. It's so much yeah, fun. Especially in the BSN voice chat. Yes. It's it's just geeking out over these things and just low it's, stuff. Oh I I hated those voice chats so much. <laughs> it was just you just come come into the voice chat. And just like, and everybody's like, <laughs> just 30 different people doing growls and fries and everything. And it's just, just big noise of nothing. <laughs> and you're like, what did I do? <laughs> what did I just start? <laughs> yeah. It's like an avalanche. Isn't it though? It's crazy. Mm. Any other ones that pop to mind? Ah, oh, dude. Right from the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Oh, yeah. One question. Yeah. From all the... From... I think you did interview with... Uh, Marwan? Peter? Casper? Did you do Bobby? I did. Oh, awesome. He, Bobby. he was... Um, he was the... He was right before the one I did with um, Lolly Rin from um, the Fairy Voice Mother, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, I did one with him. And he, you also did Jenna for Glasshopper, right? I did. Yeah, Jenna is so nice. Uh, of, of, out of all of these, because I'm counting personally Jennifer as a part of the base gang, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so out of all these, what what interview were, was your favorite? Like, not, not, not like people, like I know you you wouldn't talk personally about people, but right. or like as an interview, how it went, what, which one do you think went best? <laughs> I'm a gauge. Um, I'm going to gauge how well it went off of how long it went. Okay. My yeah, long, we... my longest, my first. Peter's was actually my longest at first. Mm. I th we ours was like an hour and forty five minutes. 
Oh, with Peter. Yes, it was like it was it was like an hour and forty, hour and forty five. So it that and it Damn. at that point it was the longest that I had done yeah. that till that point. I did let's see, so Casper's was first, then then Peter came on. He's his was the longest. Uh let's see, third I had Marwan. His mm-hmm. was his was shorter, but it still went awesome. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, Marwan is so easy to talk to. <laughs> Right. Um, then I had Bobby. Okay. So let's see. So I had, yeah, I'm having a, a brain bubble. So I had Casper. I had Peter. Casper, I had Peter, Marwan. Bobby. Bo- I had Bobby. And that one was the new longest. Like it was almost two hours. It was like an hour Ooh. and 58 minutes. Wow. Yes. He is That's so long. easy to talk to, man. I I genuinely consider Bobby like a friend of mine now. We could we just sat there and shot or like shot back and forth for two hours, and we didn't even realize yeah. two hours had passed. Yeah, that's that's what I'm usually is about. <laughs> it's pretty funny, yeah, man. As that far as awesome, like yeah. like I consider the best ones the longest ones just simply because we just sit there and we talk nonstop about music and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I had to pick like a favorite podcast so far. I would have to say the one with Bobby, but okay. I can't pick a favorite podcast out of the four people yeah, that yeah, I yeah, interviewed yeah. because I just love all you guys. Y'all are great. You're very knowledgeable <laughs> and just tell, <laughs> tell, so much fun to talk to as well. Oh uh, yeah. It is, it is fun to talk to you as well because like usually when you, when you do these podcasts, uh, like usually talk about like normal stuff. But people don't have that much insight into what you actually do. But you are a uh, born and raised BS and them. Thanks. You're carrying the banner. <laughs> I um, you know all the details, all the questions, all the weak points that you know where to shoot. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Bobby I mean, is I, such an wholesome person. So yeah. They all of you guys are great, and I I I consider all of you personal friends now because at this point that's just yeah. where we, we all have something in common. We love music, we love the voice, we love bass singing. True, true. And the boys, the boys. I all you guys are awesome. Like I will never no. ever consider myself uh, like an official you. member of any gang or any like group you guys are a part of, but I will always consider you guys a friend because it's just cool to yeah. have somebody else to geek out over the music. Yeah, with. same definitely appreciate it man but yeah that's uh all all the interviews with the base gang have been great for sure well i hope hopefully it's going to be even more fun in the future <laughs> i've got when you so get all plans. of us at the same time because that that will a, be fun if i can it's a recipe for content <laughs> like getting all of you on individually is cool to talk about your individual work yeah. and collective work with the base gang but i'm mm-hmm. trying to maybe one day arrange a time to where we can all do one without everybody in it at once maybe sick. at least for like an hour to like match the schedules that would be so much fun that would be amazing yeah, casper any communicative questions. casper we got a task for you try to help us line this up Casper, come on. I'm going to call you. I'm going to knock on your doors in two minutes. Just do it. You Get know, everybody in here. This will be great. I know when you watch it. I'm connected <laughs> to your computer. Yeah, like eyes everywhere. <laughs> I gotta love it, man. Uh, man, I love it. I love this channel. I love doing what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can friends. imagine. It must be so much fun to interview people. It really is. Like, And you get to meet such cool people. Like you get to talk to cool people like you mm-hmm. guys, you, you you get to talk to people like Luke Taylor. I mean, he was awesome too. I've never talked to you, Luke. <laughs> Luke Taylor is awesome, man. Yeah. He is. So, he's such a laid back guy. I have no idea. Like I've never seen him like even maybe except for like the talent show in America. Like mm-hmm. that's the only time I've seen him talk like not sing, just talk. And I was like, yeah, he's in front of the camera. I was like, he can be anybody. So I, I have no idea who he is. I just he, heard things he's, about him. He's a he's a really cool guy. And if you want to know more about him, or if you want to like just hear hear me and him talk for like an hour, hour and a half, I did my podcast with him not long mm-hmm. ago. It's on my channel. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. Definitely, oh. man. He's a, he's oh, a very cool, cool guy. Cool. But it's yeah, just but... so cool the people that you come across whenever 
years yeah. in here just talking music. And something else that caught me off guard, too, whenever I was mm -hmm. doing this is just how willing people were to just come on the channel, make an appearance, and just talk music and just yeah. shoot the crap and just talk. Yeah, that's, that's what people it, do, I guess. <laughs> it's so it's cool, just, man. It's it's a, how it's willing an, people are. Nature. How willing people are to cut time out of their day just to talk about something they enjoy, like music. It's awesome. Dude, anytime, like talking about music is so much fun, usually. Like sometimes, sometimes you're not really in the mood, you know, when you've been recording for five hours. And then you, you want to take a voice. break, yeah. Yeah, you know, like just get any music out of my way. I just want to watch movies. Right. <laughs> usually what happens for me. <laughs> well, I know. Any other ones that come, uh, come to mind you want to ask? Um, have you ever, who is the most popular person you've ever interviewed by views? Well, by, views, I guess by following. If, or by the following they have, I would say so far it's probably been, but I don't have to put these two together. Um, both Bobby, I'd have to say Bobby and, um, Luke. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd okay. say they, they probably have the largest following so far that I've interviewed. Oh, how many interviews do you have out right now? Episodes? Um, I believe this is number nine now. Let me look. Oh, so it, yo, yeah. Dude, I just realized it's, a first, yeah, it's kind of first time. Yeah. Casper was the first podcast ever. He was my first. Oh, yeah. He was it my is, first. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Sorry. I've done in, in that case, yeah, it's probably Bobby. I understand. <laughs> Let's see. So uh, this is actually t number 10. Last one I did with the fairy voice mother was number nine. Oh, but okay. yes, right. yes, that is uh, number ten. All right. As far as like the following, it's both Bobby and Luke because they both have pretty comparable followings, to my knowledge. Yeah, I I, I don't keep track on TikTok at all. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> but they're part of the same group, so. Yeah, pretty easy to keep track of at that point. Yeah, insane voices those two. Yes, oh, agreed. Uh, agreed. There's all the questions I can think of. <laughs> I got you, man. Sweet. Let's see. All right, so this is also a section for you to uh, or do some self-advertising. So if there's any um, anything you've got going on in your musical life, any merch, anything you want to advertise about, you have the floor for the next few minutes mm -hmm. to do that as well. All right, important question. When is this going to come out so I know what I can talk about and what not? <laughs> Typically within... Typically, these are released as soon as as soon as I record them. They're usually released within two to five days. Two to five days. So okay, just okay. shy of a week. No problem. All right. Well, in that case, I'm gonna take this time to promote a new merch site for the Bass Gang because we just started. I don't know if I. You can get these babies. <laughs> That's cool. It is. It is so cool. Dude. We have like a lot of sweatshirts. And with like different patterns of like these two bass clefs are kind of yeah. when you put them together, they put, uh, form like a heart. So with like that design, we have a whole section with different kinds of like even mugs and stuff. So definitely go for that. That looks so cool. And we just launched it. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the pause. However, there was information shared in this portion of the podcast that was not meant for public ears. Therefore, it has to be cut out. We will see you in just a moment whenever we resume. Make sure you guys check out their uh, Patreon or Base Gang Patreon, um, Tommy's yes. Patreon, and his, and all their socials as well. They'll yes, be linked in the cool. description. There's a lot of karaoke tracks now coming to Patreon every week, so definitely check that out. Yeah, for sure. All right. So if you were done with your self advertisement portion we're going to move on to the community submitted questions i've, I've been never good at <laughs> like that so, so these are kind of all over the place these are kind of all over the place as far as like um subject matter all right so the first yeah. one i have this one comes from base crispies in the bsn okay. um, what were your initial goals or expectations for the base nation community well i already mentioned that and uh, it's it was originally just communicate community for my own channel, my own YouTube channel. Somebody from the chat uh, recommended me Discord, and just 
downloaded it and we created the server. So that was just for my channel. And then it started to be a place for every base on the internet that just wanted a community to and something to be part of. And, and it was awesome. And we had a good thing going. And, you know, until... <laughs> <laughs> What or this is another this is a two or three part question. So the second part is what has surprised you most about how the base nation has grown and developed since you started it? Uh, I was like, uh, admit it or not, it just like eh, it's 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 a reality that thanks to basing nation, the base gang was formed. Like that wouldn't be a thing if if I wouldn't have like created that server. Isn't which that crazy? is the most insane thing to think about yeah but it grew it like just from hearing from you uh that it like kind of helped you on your journey throughout music that is that is even if it even if it would be just you it would that was worth it like if, if we we can help at least one person or, or inspire them to do something uh in regards to music then yeah it worked and it was for thousands of people, which was absolutely unbelievable for us uh, back then. So, yeah, definitely. And the third part of the question being with the following community and success that you've built for yourself, what is the biggest setback you've experienced? Biggest setback? Oh my God. Well, that was definitely last year <laughs> when, uh, when I like basically my whole life crumbled at like three days. Uh, oh, wow. because like my whole album went to crap like I lost all the data and my relationship and my job like all of them three days uh, in a row that oh, was wow. very fun so but uh, luckily the album was restored after a couple of weeks but that was the biggest fallback for for time because <laughs> yeah, basically when you can't do anything then you basically the crap hits the fan multiple things go wrong at once Yes, you're basically living a whole another life right now. I guess everything you were doing 95% of the time just disappeared. <laughs> and just the, really like overcoming like the emotional pressure you probably had on your shoulders at that point in your in your life. Yeah, I am. I don't know. You just get used to it, I guess, after after a couple of years. <laughs> but I, I really didn't like I was pretty glad to oh, lose that job. And it opened the door to so many more opportunities. And I'm a programmer now Woo. there you go <laughs> and the the other last port mini part of that question was do you feel you've overcome it and you kind of sort of answered that oh yeah yeah, yeah. kind of with the oh, like it's purely musically talking like it is probably even like a recommendation maybe for you for the future if you take take up something on your shoulder something huge like really huge insanely huge like nine months of hard work non-stop huge like mm -hmm. an album of so of songs be sure that you do your proper diligence of advertising and that you have the following to boost this album where you need it to go and then you have a follow-up plans for this album like make music videos for it and everything yeah. because it is a hard thing to sell like entire album out of nothing it's just yeah so just rather, I should have probably stayed with um, regular projects and just making music because uh, thanks to this album, I had the biggest burnout of my life probably because mm -hmm. I couldn't arrange anything. I was like, don't, don't talk to me about mixing anything. I was just working <laughs> on nine songs in a row. Yeah. But it's just, and I had it even badly organized because I started arranging and then I arranged all the songs. Yeah. Then I started recording and recording all the songs. Then I started mixing and mix all the songs. So I was tired, tired of arranging, singing, and of mixing. If I would <laughs> just do it by song by song, it would probably be better. I don't know. But yeah, so that is it's a dangerous thing to I'll take something that is bigger than you. Uh, uh, that is good for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, this one comes from Fernie himself. Uh, how did you learn whistle or whistle tones? Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, I don't, I, I always kind of had it, I guess. After, after I, uh, my voice changed and it, it was a little bit of discovering of 
and getting back my notes that I had when I was a kid. <laughs> and that's how I discovered falsetto. And I was actually, I was thinking back then I was the only one who, who can do it. Like nobody can do it. Like I never heard anybody do it. I'm like, look, like I have a deep voice, but I can still do this thing. Like it is so awesome. <laughs> I kept it. Uh, and then I tr just pushed it harder and sometimes it just, and just switches into that like more tight thing. And I don't know. I don't even know how I do it. It's just, it's just there. Just like. It almost feels like you're in falsetto, but you're just can, you're just pushing higher. Yep, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to like the air has to be like airtight, <laughs> literally. That was my attempt at it. I think I bot I was bottoming out at like a C six or bottoming out, <laughs> topping bottoming. off. <laughs> oh, bottoming out yeah, at a C six. <laughs> True high soprano. <laughs> I need to growl below C uh, C six. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Just to the vocast. Welcome to the vocast. You have officially been dubbed a guest by me stumbling on my words. <laughs> All right, oh. let's see. Oh yeah. This cool. one also comes from Bass Krispies. Um, there is a video from 2020 in the Base Nation that uh, you apparently are in that uh, they would like to have more context on. Um, oh no! Please don't don't play anything they I, sent you. I'm not gonna play it, but okay. it it was a video sent from Casper. And oh the, well, that's even wor worse too. Um, so the caption for this video, uh, Casper said. In quote, hey Tommy, I'm a big fan. I'm a tenor who, and then in quote. So do you know what we're talking about? I'm not gonna play it, but. Oh, I think, uh, I think that I'll might send be the first voice message he ever sent me. Let me let me send you the link to this that I have, so that way you know what I'm talking about, and we're okay, not displaying yeah, it over we're... the internet. So, yeah. there we go. Well... I don't have a I don't have an access to that. That's I, it, it doesn't let me in. Oh wait, 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 hang on. Um another server probably. Where is this? Okay, let me click this back. Let me this sends me back to here. Okay, that makes sense. So let me do this. If I click on this, it takes me back to here. Copy this link, send it to you. This should work. Okay. That one should work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they were wanting oh, more yeah, context on that. that. Yeah, that's that's. I was sitting one day at the <laughs> at the barber shop, kinda, and I was getting my haircut, and somebody, somebody, sent this. I don't even know. It's it was just somebody sent something, and oh, uh, this is this is what I. <laughs> I don't have a reason. I was we, this is a big meme big meme at the time. Like the you bloody bloody like the you know the video from the internet of the Yes uh British uh, Indian guys, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shouting at each other like from a car and it, the whole conversation ended up in yes. like Okay, thank you, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just, remember that. This is so funny, so I will yeah, I will did. find a section in here to play it for the audience. So that way if I mean you're cool with playing it, I'll find a section to put it in here so that way they know what we're talking about. Yeah. But <laughs> You bloody bitch bastard. Fucking bloody bastard bitch. I don't answer bitches. Fuck you. So yes, that's the context for the video. Yes, yes. All right, let's see. The next question here. This one comes from the Bard. Do you ever the do folk do you ever do vocal fidget with extended techniques like humming to yourself what? and subs etc vocal fidgets what? he they're called or he calls them vocal fidgets and like what vocal exercises pretty much yeah so like do you ever like hum to yourself and like subharmonics or you just practice oh, inhale under your breath or stuff like that yeah most of the time oh uh, i'm blending my uh transition between the chest and chest right because i found it's something that you just need to keep like practicing on even if you learn it and you're good at it and you can lose it pretty fast once you're not doing it and not, not, no, you're not used to the feeling of the transitioning 
-hmm. So I do that a lot, but I don't do much of the uh, subharmonics anymore, but I should. I definitely should. I'm, lo I'm, lo I'm starting to lose it a little bit. Oh, me too. So, yeah, chest fire usually. Uh, I don't know if I, I can think about some... Um, my the the bass line from the Hoktona filling car by the bass gang is one of my favorite for a long time. I'm just doing the like that 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 just jumping all over the place is mm -hmm. it is so much fun. So it's so much fun. <laughs> that was my favorite part of that whole oh. entire song. Is yeah, just that that for like through the minutes before I got it for Tim's demo. <laughs> It's like I did my video of that. I covered or I covered that video in a reaction video, like Peter does, and I was like, "Yeah, I saw that." <laughs> I was, I was like, "Dude, that is so cool." Yeah. It is so cool. <laughs> no, that's way too long. Way it's it's only I'm gonna turn it this. That is it's, just. It's, it is hard to. Yeah. That's a really cool trinket in there. Was that your idea, by the way? Yeah, this is my arrangement, and I don't know what I was thinking, but for Tim, <laughs> it was perfect. That's so good. That was really good, man. Yeah, actually, in the original, it was bum bum ba da bum bum, mm -hmm. but then when we send it to Ed, like uh, Ed Boyer, who did the mixing, he yeah. actually cut the line to make it bum bum ba da ba bum. Like he cut the beat at mm -hmm. uh, 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 half, and yeah, it it sounds perfect. It it sounds uh, wonderful. Yeah, so some of some of the ideas were also from him. <laughs> he's he's a genius, man. Oh yeah. All right, this one comes from Element or Element of Surprise. What are your go-to songs to sing, both for performing and just singing casually? Um, I guess more like a go-to style, maybe. If you style. have one, it's like mm. like songs that you would like, songs that you just like to sing casually and or just for performing for people, uh, recording. I've been I've been really enjoying seeing uh, the from Hamilton a uh, song called uh, "You'll Be Back." It, it's like hmm. you say the price of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay. It is such I've a like. I've heard a, that before. Oh. It, you heard it? I think I've heard it before. Oh yeah, just... there's a very popular section with the. It's in the in the chorus, like you'll be back soon. You see, you'll remember you belong to me. Yes, I, I think I've heard that before. I need to go listen to it off camera now. It is absolutely banger, and I love to sing it. Like it's in the end, like on the end of my high range, so it's like a G four all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> which yeah. I hate, but uh, it's a great practice. And also, I recommend so much for basses that want to like better their upper register and get some like power into it. Uh, Poor man's poison. That guy is a baritone. He's great. He he has a very popular song nowadays with like a uh, uh, hell's coming with me. I, uh, it's called. So I would definitely recommend that. There is a hill at the bottom of the valley. Yes, <laughs> like, I love that song. Da, da, da. Yeah. That is my. That is one of my favorite like Western style songs. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I love them. All right, this one comes, or the next two, or the next one also comes from Element of Surprise. Um, paintball or airsoft? Paintball, probably, but I never play any. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I have, I haven't. Oh yeah, I kind of did. I don't know. Probably paintball. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like them both, honestly. I I do either one. That's that's me though. Understandable. Yeah. If this I would one, have an opportunity, then I would go either one. Yeah. Yeah. This one comes from Oddball. What's your favorite pizza topping? Um, actually, I prefer cream. Oh, uh, instead of tomato, tomato. Cream instead of tomato. Like a cream sauce. Okay, okay. Uh, with uh, ham on it, uh, probably corn, like the... Oh, shit, I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> little pieces of corn. 
That's interesting. Uh, Never had onion, that on pizza definitely before. onion. I love onion, and I put it on everything, on my chocolate, everything. <laughs> Again, <laughs> that's far too much, but yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, probably these, yeah. But I, lo I like loads of them with salami and uh, bacon, like anything, even with, like, tomatoes. Uh, I don't really like uh, mushrooms, like, any kinds. It's just, I've never really liked them on anything, so. Yeah, and I got you. I hate those. <laughs> <laughs> I hate olives too. I'm in the same boat. Oh, thank you. Uh, this one comes from that one dog person. What is the most, or what is, let me see if I can word this correctly. What is one cheat? What is the one achievement that you're most proud of? This can be any part, any portion of your life. Uh, it would be probably, uh, I, I never bring it out, but like, technically speaking, I'm responsible for the creation of the base king. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be my biggest issue. Oh, no, I would probably say, yeah, honestly, like realistically, I would say, uh, the fact that I could like lose everything last year. Uh, at once and then just picked myself up and learn how to do web developing developing in two and a half months to mm -hmm. find a job that is something that i i really bet <laughs> my life on basically mm -hmm. and for some reason it worked i don't know how i did it but i'm very proud of that you should yeah. be that's a that's yeah. pretty that's a pretty short time period to learn something as complicated as web developing thank you yeah, it is right in my alley, and I was l lucky to find it. Good stuff, man. This one comes from um, Kudo Squared. Uh, anything or any fun projects upcoming with the base gang? Only, obviously, um, only share the information you're able to share. Well, our most recent project is the merch site that we launched, <laughs> mm -hmm. which we are very, very proud of, and I think people are going to like very much. Um, and there is definitely projects that we are, we are planning. One of them was already announced for the patrons, but besides that, we have other projects that we are planning that are undisclosed yet. And the next one, the, like the soonest one to come, or uh, it's going to be probably announced very soon, but the planned release is sometimes like in give it take few months, like the two months or maybe. How excited Maybe. should these Maybe. audiences be for these recent projects that are coming up? Yeah, this one is going to be good. <laughs> good. Trust me. You trust Tommy, boys, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. If he says it's good, it's likely to be very, very good. Yes, yes. I'm not going to tell who's arranging. I can take a wild guess, but I'm not going to on camera. Uh, you probably would guess wrong. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. But... <laughs> If it's any, if it's even half as big as this most recent project y'all just released, then it's going to be absolutely epic. You could say that, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. I haven't heard the finished like product. We we're just just started working on it, so. I got you, guys. Stay tuned for that. Whatever it's going to be, something to be excited for. Yes. Okay. Pretty good. All right, this one comes from um, what is going on. Um, any live performances what coming up? What about you? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Uh, this one's asking any live performances coming up. Uh, live performances? Yes, there's going to be one uh, in the early, uh, early April, which is going to be about like all talking with Shotzi. Because it's the only group I go like sing live with, mm -hmm. so we're gonna be definitely having a performance uh, somewhere around here. Like, if you wanna come, just keep track of our socials. It's gonna be there. Uh, but we are also planning with Casper some some live stuff in the summer. So hopefully that's gonna happen. We'll see. Good stuff. Exciting. It's gonna be. Yeah, for sure. This. Um... This next question comes from Fernie as well. Will the base streams come back at any at some point in the future? Base gang streams? Yes, and he's also talking about the roast streams where apparently you guys roasted each other. 
I don't remember that actually. I remember stream where somebody like people were roasting me. <laughs> like there was there was a day where like I let the chat and everybody to send and everything like and just make fun of me as much as they can. <laughs> and holy cow, some of those people were so creative. Like that, I think that I how I fell for Casper kinda. <laughs> because, <laughs> because he was the memer of the century. <laughs> that's then, funny. Yeah, but uh, that's a that's a good idea. We can definitely try that. Uh, I can pitch it to the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I I personally don't remember it, but um, he wanted me to ask. So, all right. Um, all right. Yeah, good idea. This one also comes from Element of Surprise. Can you briefly summarize your arrangement process for your music? It has changed so much over the years. Uh, before that, the songs that you are probably asking about, which is either hellfires out of silence or my mother told me because this is three that everybody knows is their favorites for some mm -hmm. reason and uh, so back then for all these songs i just sit down i download the cover uh the cover the original music and then i listen to it and i start writing the melody of the of the of the song the, the actual singing melody lead mm -hmm. And I start to figure out like chords around it, different techniques you can use, like in a couple of music arrangement wise, like bell tones, like changing vowels, ah, ooh, oh, stuff, and some rises, like, whoop, and, and anything basically, well, along with the bass line. Sometimes the bass line even goes first if it's the most prominent thing. Mm -hmm. It depends. But nowadays, nowadays, I'm taking a way different approach. I just start recording, and I learned it from Marwan a lot. I just start doing it and it it that is like there's that feeling of of seeing it grow in front of your eyes yeah yeah because if you if you write sheet music like i did oh uh, then you just see it on paper and you can play the like uh, sampled tracks but it is not the it's it is not it you know you don't yeah. hear the uh, the voices you don't hear the words the different punctuations and if you just start recording it is it takes much longer to figure out the arrangement because every mistake yeah. you're just like okay the, there's like 10 minutes gone of recording <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so yeah there's that that very uh, big excitement of seeing that section that you just finished and that's what i usually do now i'm working on a on a music that i just i uh, started to beat I did some samples for like a for like a kick and or I don't like did it, did it, did it, did it, like a bass in the background. Yeah. And I just started singing uh, along with the with the original and it is turning out to be pretty <laughs> freaking good. Isn't that funny? Like you you go to you put some stuff in there and you just kind of wing it. You throw it in there yeah, and you're like, yeah. that sounds really cool. I'm gonna keep doing yes. it. Especially <laughs> if the original is very fire. Mm -hmm. Like recently actually that changed my <laughs> music perspective a lot because sure. i was never a metal fan or a hip-hop fan yeah that that was like, that was never my type of music because i'm from a central europe and it's like that got here in like late thousands yeah and 2000s and uh, i just never got into it i was always like for like folk country and then pop music even like rock music some kinds but these hardcore styles and recently Daribor showed me my friend from from the from Shotzi showed me the this video uh by falling in reverse called watch the world burn mm -hmm. and i i lost my mind like for the first time i was just watching the video i was like what <laughs> like, what am I watching? Like, this is not even real. Right. Like, this has the biggest budget. This is bigger budget than She-Hulk, like, from Marvel. Like, this yeah. is this is insane. And then I started listening to the music more, uh, uh, like, to, on, in that video. And the stuff he can do, and, like, by, from the arranging perspective, like, the, the editing perspective, the mixing perspective, from his vocal perspective. Like, wow. It, it is just so experience i cannot like to describe it in, uh, uh, 
this is it's yeah it is uh, it is indescribable and it pushed me like in the what music actually means uh in my head a lot yeah like to me like it's you can do literally anything and this is the proof like this is crazy this shouldn't be possible this shouldn't sound good (laughs) but it sounds absolutely amazing right so yeah i'm trying to experiment with a lot of new stuff that i've just never used because i was either afraid or i didn't know how yeah for sure this one comes from aqua alta if there's any piece of advice you would give to young singers what would it be and before you answer that actually goes along with one of the traditional questions that i actually forgot to ask so this question is basically the same as that one so what that is is do you have any tips tricks or life hacks for people for anyone that sings wants to sing or is trying to make a career out of singing life hacks life hacks to make it easier tips yeah that really really depends on what kind of singing you choose because I, I have experience as a bass. I can tell you a lot of tricks for like a bass stuff. Uh, but a lot of them does, don't apply to, to higher, uh, higher voice types. But in general, uh, well, this is not a tip or trick. This is just like a rule. Just stay hydrated, please. Please stay hydrated. Like, as, like the higher voice you have, the more hydrated and careful you be. Because... That means your vocal folds are really thin. So just take care, please. Uh, but like a tip. Uh, for like a lower register, I would say uh, light self-induced trauma to, to your uh, vocal folds is mm-hmm. a really neat trick. But you have to be careful for it. If you're a bass, you can pretty much like sh- shout and yell the whole night. And even like smoke and drink alcohol. And in the morning... Like you're gonna be technically like healthy with just like really deep voice. And it's still not good to do like every day, but uh yeah. be careful with it. But but it is that's a an, pretty pretty That's an easy yeah. way to get nodules if you do, if you ever do it. Yes, yes. Especially for the high voices. So just careful. Yeah. And for the higher singing, there is actually something very interesting that I learned from Tim. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, oh, this is cool. And that was that was when I saw him live, which happened. <laughs> uh, that was when he had uh, they were they were having a concert in in Prague with Home Free. Mm-hmm. It was like five years ago, and we went to see them with uh, Shotzi, and I bought a VIP ticket, so I get to see them before anybody else. And we we get to we get to ask S questions, and I asked him, "Would you give me any tips how to sing lower?" <laughs> And he told me that he recently found out that, that if, if you do a lot of high, high singing in your high chest voice, mm-hmm. it's going to position your like vocal folds uh, in the right condition to when you try to go down to your chest dry. It has to be chest dry because I tried with chest. It doesn't really work like that with pure chest low notes. Mm-hmm. But if you have that chest ride that Tim uses, that I do use a lot, it's going to make them so crisp and powerful. Like <laughs> Interesting. If, if at one time, you are just like, oh, oh, like it is there, but it is really like hard to project. Then just do like a, oh, 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 just some high singing. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, everything just opens like automatically for a while. That's interesting. So that's, uh, yeah. A good that's trick. really cool that's really cool man i didn't know that myself that's awesome well you heard it from tim post <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that is cool right, let's see all right i'm gonna do one last quick run through to make sure i didn't miss anything and then we will wrap this up let's all right it was a lot of fun looks like i've got everything on here so if there's anything else that uh, you would like to say or that has not been said yet you have the floor to do that and i do as well before we close it down for the day all right well uh i would just like to add something for all the people who came here from my side of youtube uh 
I know I haven't released anything on YouTube for a long time, but and it's probably going to be like this for at least like two more months. There's a lot of stuff happening in my personal life, and I'm focused on the bass gang a lot. So, but I'm I'm definitely going to be making more music, and uh, I already have a lot of projects I'm working on. It's just going to be something new that I have to go through a lot to to be, be really sure that it's something worthy of, of release. So yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> Guys, make sure you go check out Tommy on his socials, on his Patreon. Go check out the Bass Gang. They are some awesome people. They put out amazing work. This is going to wrap up the podcast with Tommy today. This is going to be the new longest podcast I had on the <laughs> on the channel. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we broke it. We broke the we broke the record for the longest. Uh, let's so. go. That's that's not a bad that's not a bad problem to have. Just take a little bit longer <laughs> uploading. But guys, yeah, thank no. you so much for I'm hanging fine. out with us today. We had a good time. We learned a lot about Tommy. Hope to have you back on for a follow up podcast at some point in the future. Yeah, yeah, dude. Thank you so much for having me. It was hella fun and, and I needed it more than I uh expected. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>